Thank you so much, Robin, for being with us today. We are so honored to have the opportunity to speak with you. So you are a board certified health coach. You are the owner of your global coaching business, Your Healthiest You. You're a leading authority on gut health, two-time best-selling author, and all-around wellness and mindfulness expert. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love being with my IN family. So I would love to get started with you being an authority on gut health, and that meaning not just physical gut health, but also your intuition. Why is that central to your work, and how did you decide to get into that? So I noticed in the first years of my coaching practice, I was always starting with our gut. Hmm. It's the center of us. It's our core. There's so many connections there, right? We've got the physical health of our gut and then also the emotional and mental well-being that is connected. And so I found with my coaching clients, if I started there, I could get them results so quickly. Sometimes simply by chewing more, adding in a probiotic, simplifying our foods, they could see results so quickly. And the more that they did this work hmm. and made these changes their intuition started to bubble up and speak to them more loudly and clearly. And this was the same in my journey as well. So I would hear more gut hits the more that I focused on healing my own gut. And so that was the work I did with my clients. So that's what I brought into my work and was the beginning of my first book, Go With Your Gut, as well. Oh, I love that. And so another thing that's really unique to you is um, you have two children. I do. Um, you have a lot going on. You have a business. You have a very full life. And you're very transparent about motherhood and how challenging it can be. Can you just share about, like, how do you do it and why do you feel called to be so transparent? Mm. I love this question. I have a six-year-old and now a one-year-old, and it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And I think often on social media in particular, it could come across like, I've got it all and everything's running smoothly. But what I'm not sharing is my kids crying, their meltdowns, when I'm overwhelmed and frustrated because it's not respectful of them and yeah. our home space. And so I like to share when appropriate, when I feel like I can speak to it from a calm place, mm. that it's okay if you're frustrated, if you're upset, if you're feeling lost as a parent, and you can still be you and you can still show up in your work and you don't have to say, okay, I've got it all together today. So now I can do the thing. So over the years, I learned ways that I could share about that from an authentic and honest place. And I do share, I have a lot of help. I have a supportive partner. I have a home that I love and it's still hard. And you can show up in your work and your life, even when you're having a day that's really frustrating with your kids and it's okay. Your clients still love you. Your community will forgive you. It's part of who you are. I love that so much, just being so um, transparent and accessible for other people because so many people struggle with that. And speaking of struggling, um, through the pandemic, you actually created uh, meditations called Guided Grounding. Can you just talk us through that, what that was, what the inspiration was, what that is? And I think you said you have a membership with that, so I'd love to hear more. Yes, this is like the baby of my business that I'm so incredibly proud of. I was always leading guided meditations for my clients for years. I was doing them on retreats. And then my friend, um, colleague, mentor, she said, she's like, that's my favorite thing that you do. And I never had an opportunity to bring it outside of working with me. And at the beginning of the pandemic, we ended up in the countryside. I now live in Brooklyn. And I was fortunate enough to have childcare with me. So I could really show up. I had one child at the time and I had this gut feeling, again, coming back to our gut intuitive hits, that I could share this with the large community and help people. And so I realized at the heart of it, I'm guiding people to get grounded. And the more we can get grounded in our bodies, in our spirits, connecting to Mother Earth, connecting to ourselves, our heart, our intuition, the more we can live from a place of presence, of joy, of ease, of softness. So I created these guided grounding sessions. I was leading them on Instagram three times a week. Fast forward now two, three years, and I have launched a membership where all of those guided grounding sessions live, and I go live a couple times a month, and honestly, I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know a lot of our work is to help and support others, and that's what it does, but for me to have those dates on the calendar mm -hmm. when I need to get clear and ground down and get quiet and show up from that place gives me so much for myself, for my mm -hmm. work, for my family, for everything. Oh, that's so fulfilling. That's amazing. And you also, on top of that, you also are leaning into business coaching, which you've been health coaching for, I think, 13 years. Why did it take so long or why did you choose to delay getting into business coaching? You're also coaching creatives. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, that one, so unlike the guided grounding yeah. membership, that was immediate, right? Like this has to happen, mm. this has to be birthed mm. this week. It happened in like two days and it was out into the world. Mm. My mastermind, my rock star mastermind now has been literally six years that I've been taking notes on this, working away at it. I really didn't feel like I was at a place yet to be able to confidently teach it. Mm. Just because I was living it and doing it well and mm. successfully didn't mean that I felt like I had the skills to show others a similar path and find it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept taking notes. So this is helpful for our community, right? To say like, you can do things later. Life yeah. is a long time, God willing, like Joshua mm -hmm. would say, that you can take notes on projects, future visions, ideas, and when they're ready to be birthed, they'll show you. Mm -hmm. And so eventually the notes got so clear and it got so loud that I had to launch it. And I'm so mm -hmm. proud to say that I filled it completely within like a week. Mm -hmm. And it's wow. been my highest grossing offering ever. And again, it's giving me so much. Wow. I feel wonderful doing it. And I still have my health coaching clients. So it's really, what are the ways that I feel nourished in my business and that I can best help others as well? Wow, it's, there's just so much going on. And on top of it, you also have such an incredible social media presence, which is really challenging for some people. And a lot of our students struggle with, how do I build my audience and also still have boundaries? What's been your experience with creating an audience still having boundaries? So one thing I'd love to share about social media is we tend to add a lot of drama there, right? We get, it's designed that way. Things come in our face, on our phone, we weren't prepared for it, we get jolted, we're looking for wellness and you know all these, we, it doesn't feel like it's within our control. I like to remind my coaching clients and the people in my mastermind to help neutralize social media. Mm. So to see that in a good way, not in like a negative way, but just can I come to social media with a calmness, with removing the charge, removing the trigger? How can I show up today? What do I wanna say? What do I wanna share? And can I be a part of this community in a way that feels um, less dramatic, but in a good way? So I think of it more as a marketing arm in my business, mm. right? The same way that we send a newsletter, ideally every week, the same way I show up in social media. I share what's authentic and fun for me. Um, I, myself, I don't know what other way to be. Mm. I think when we try you know, to not be ourselves, it can feel more exhausting. And so when it feels more energizing for me is I just show up, where am I at? How am I helping people? That's mm. my way. Some people like to come um, in with more clear content. Mm. I like to share myself and my life and see the lessons and the support that comes out of that. Find your way. See if you can neutralize it a little bit. If you're feeling charged around it, likely it's time to put it down. I often don't story or share much on the weekends and I've never made it a thing. I just don't. I don't feel the need to explain myself. I don't need to, to say I'm taking a break or I'm doing this. I just do what I need and then I come back and it's no big deal. Oh, that's so good. That's so helpful for our students. So as an IN grad that has created an amazing positive ripple effect uh, in the world. I'm sure a lot of our new grads are looking to you and saying, I can't do that, you know, I can't achieve that. How could I do that? What is one piece of advice that you have for new grads that just are really scared, don't know what to do? How do they push past their comfort zone? So one piece of advice I have for new grads is to really just focus on the next right thing. I know for myself, when I would think of all the things I want to do or all the things I wanted to create, I would get overwhelmed and not do anything. And so tune in, get quiet, do one of my meditations, see what's there, what is the next right thing for you? And then you can make a list for what wants to come later. But just being able to focus on one thing at a time helps to keep you moving forward. And then when you see, oh, I'm doing the thing, then you expand and you can keep going and then you can do the next thing. This hasn't always been easy for me. I struggled a lot with my own mental health, days I didn't want to get out of bed for my clients. And I just kept putting those things on the calendar that lit me up, that I needed to show up for no matter what. And eventually just saying, okay, you know, maybe I work from a more nervous place or a worried place or a feeling not good enough or like I don't know enough. It doesn't mean I can't still do it and mm -hmm. show up. And so I did it from this much more imperfect, here's where I'm at place. And I know I can still help and support and lead. And so you can too. Yeah. And so shifting gears a little bit, I would love to hear about your morning routine if you have one and evening routine if you have one. Okay, my morning and evening routine. I have two children. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they make your routine. <laughs> they make my routine. It's like pre-kids and post-kids. Uh, now I am greeted by my daughter. I breastfeed her. And then I try to take a minute. I have mm. my husband at home mornings for just a little bit. I say, just give me five minutes, mm. right? We often think our morning routine needs to be this whole start to finish thing. In the morning, I just get a couple minutes. Mm. But everybody in my house knows, my six-year-old knows, 
You're either meditating with mommy or you're leaving her alone. Mm. She's not available in that time. So it's one song sometimes. Sometimes it's just three deep breaths, just taking a minute. So just making sure that I have a morning minute for myself mm -hmm. is all I need for my morning routine. When mm. I get, you know, maybe on a weekend day and I can get more time, I will put on a much longer meditation. I'll do mm -hmm. movement. I make mm -hmm. my matcha, my mm -hmm. cacao, all the things. Um, but even just a minute is enough. Mm -hmm. And then at evening, this is when I do go all out. And mostly mm. it's my skincare. Oh, okay. I find my skincare, that is my wellness routine. I'm like, I'm like eight serums deep <laughs> and my <laughs> lotion and my oil and my gua sha and, and all the things. I'm like, you know, I've, my husband's like, are you ready to come to bed? I'm like, no, I have two more serums to go and then three topical things after that. I just find it so relaxing to <laughs> massage my face and take a minute in there. It's like, I'm in the bathroom, no one can bother me. Mm. Um, so that's what I do. And then I actually, when I'm in bed and the lights are out is I review my day mm. and I get my spirit ready to connect to the spirit world. Mm. So I go over what happened that day. Sometimes I do fall asleep, <laughs> just a few thoughts in. Um, but I get my, um, I go over my day, anything I want to notice. And then I think anything I need to do for the morning or the next day. So it's out of my head. And then I connect to my heart. I connect to my body, my belly, my intuition. And I connect to the world beyond me. And then I get ready to receive messages and play in my dreams and mm. sleep. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. And then last thing I want to ask what is one wellness tip that really is accessible or has changed your life or worked for you that you'd love to share? My favorite wellness tip is still to share about chewing. <laughs> so I used to run a chewing challenge where literally all we did together for 21 days was chew our food. And I find, you know, we have all these wellness things that these practices that we want to focus on, right? Getting in our yoga, going for walks, getting our vitamin D, all the things, but we have, have to eat every day. And so we have all these opportunities throughout our day to chew and to bring ourselves into the present moment to support our digestive system so we can get more of those gut hits, feel that gut intuition flowing through us. And it's just from the simple practice of chewing. And that allows us to slow down, eat more mindfully and enjoy our food a lot more. Cause I'm one of the main reasons I went to IIN was because I love food and I still do. So I want to make the most of my meal time. So through chewing, that's my favorite tip. Oh, I love that. It's so simple. Oh man. Well, Thank you so much for being with us. I mean, on behalf of everyone at IAN, you've been part of the IAN family for years. We just love you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I love being here.